Hey there, my name's Logan Taylor, and I'm the president and founder of the Dazzle Cleaning Company, the gayest cleaning company in America in Seattle, Washington, and also the president and founder of Cleaning Business Marketing. So um, when I got Dazzle to over a million dollars in monthly or in annual revenue, that'd be nice if it were monthly revenue. Um, when I got Dazzle to over a million dollars in annual revenue, I really started stepping away from the business in a significant way. And I wanted to focus on something new and exciting and something that I really love. And that's marketing. So that's why I started cleaning business marketing. And cleaning business marketing, the only thing that we do is set up and manage Facebook and Google ads for residential cleaning companies. So when I was trying to decide what to talk about, it would have been a really obvious option to talk about setting up Google or Facebook ads. So I was telling my boyfriend about my talk that was going to be uh, how to explode your business with Google ads. So we're sitting out there and I'm, you know, going on and on for about half an hour about it. And he's like, this is like really dry and boring and most people don't care. And most people just want to outsource that anyway. So maybe you should talk about something that they're not going to want to outsource. And I thought, oh, yeah, that is true. Um, so I decided instead of talking about that, I will talk about how to close the back door. So you're bringing all of these new clients in the front door, but you have some, hopefully not too many, running out the back door. Well, we want to reduce that number. We want to reduce the number of cancellations as much as possible. So you're always going to have cancellations, um, but we're just going to suppress it. And when I'm talking about cancellations, I'm referring to regular recurring clients that have weekly, monthly, or um, bi-weekly service. And they're not you know, skipping a service because they went to Hawaii. They are saying, I hate you or whatever. It doesn't matter. They moved. They don't want your service anymore. That's a cancellation. So those people, how do we, not, how do we reduce the number of cancellations? There's um, three big things that we can do. So first, we want to maximize new client conversions, which that's not really a way to prevent cancellations, but it's just such low-hanging fruit and so easy to do that I'm going to bring it up very quickly anyway. The second thing is develop an exceptional new client onboarding strategy. Uh, and the third is to, to develop and implement a loyalty program. And I'm going to tell you exactly step-by-step step how to set up a loyalty program. So the very first thing that we want to do is make sure that the end of your sales process is really tightened up. And so that means that everyone who receives, everyone who has a service from your company, they need to get a quote for weekly, biweekly, and monthly service, even if they've never said a single word about possibly wanting ongoing service. Um, there's a couple reasons for this, but the biggest reason is that oftentimes if you give somebody a quote for a first time cleaning or a one time cleaning or a seasonal deep cleaning, that might be 500 bucks. And they think, I can't afford this every two weeks. Well, yeah, and that might be true, but they could possibly afford $190 every two weeks. So what you want to do is um, make sure that they know what the price for their home is. So um, we give pricing for all move-in cleanings, um, all one-time, seasonal, whatever. Everybody gets it. Um, and... Then the, so maximize new client conversions, tighten up the end of your sales process. Every single person who has any type of service with you, except possibly a move out cleaning, gets a quote for weekly, biweekly, and monthly service. Hopefully you're already doing that, but if you're not, start right now and you'll start getting new, more conversions immediately. All right. Then what's the next thing that we're going to do? We want to develop an exceptional new client onboarding strategy. So here's what we do at my company. When somebody has their first visit, even if it's not a recurring client, it might just be a one-time client, um, but especially if they, because you never know if they're going to become recurring, but especially a recurring client, um, we always do a field check at their first visit. So we have um, our field manager, Geo, go out there, checks to make sure that all of the work is done to our um, to the level that we expect. And then he leaves a new client welcome guide. 
And this is basically our sales documents. And it's the same thing that we send them as a PDF when we send them their initial quote. But these are printed out in a nice branded folder, opened. And it has all kinds of information in there that they might find helpful or useful or that we want them to see, like teaching them how to refer us and what they're going to get from us when they do refer us and how to review us and what they're going to get from us when they review us and a little infograph that shows what we did to become a carbon neutral company and um, a little magnet that says the gayest cleaning company in America that hopefully they'll hang up on their fridge and that hopefully their friends will see. In addition to leaving those promotional do documents, we also give them a branded gift. There's so many branded gifts that you could give. Mm. I'm a big fan of branded coffee cups because uh, people don't throw away coffee cups. They might give them away, but who cares? They're still out there. Um, things that are stupid, pens, keychains, they get lost and people don't want them. Um, Another thing that's good if you don't want to do a coffee cup is, I mean, anything, right? We have this thing called gay spray and it's like we make them in these little bottles and they have um, just lavender and eucalyptus oil. Super easy. And it's branded and it's like, you know, gay spray. They're going to like, oh, look at this funny thing. You know, they show their friends. Um, so anything's good. Another thing, I'm in Arizona right now and everybody has these car like sunshades in their windshields and most of them don't have any kind of promotion on them. That's a great promotional giveaway if you live in a very sunny, hot place. Um, it wouldn't work in Seattle where my business is because we don't have any sun to block out, unfortunately. All right. So um, we put our coffee cups with tissue paper with um, little chocolates in it. So it's just like a cute little thing that you do for them. Coffee cups. I don't have um, a Dazzle one, but I have a cleaning business marketing one, which is pretty much the same. And these are like three or four bucks. They're super cheap. And people are going to see it so many times. The reason why this is good, this this promotional material is because your branding needs to be repetitive and it needs to be layered. Layered means that they, you know, you want your people need to see your brand over and over, but they need to see it in different ways. Just seven emails or seven times on Facebook isn't good enough. You need to see it like on Facebook and at a coffee cup at your friend's house and on, you know, a billboard or a door hanger or whatever you're doing, right? You just want to make repetitive marketing. And so this is just a great way to do that. Um, and then we send, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> and then we send a follow-up email the same day or the next day. And the follow-up email just says, thank you so much for booking a service with Dazzle. We really hope that we met and or exceeded your expectations. If there's anything that we could do to improve your experience with Dazzle, please let us know. Um, and then we include a review link because this is like they're so happy today. They're not used to having their home cleaned yet. This is the highest. This is the time when they're most likely to review your company. <clears throat> and uh, then we would, and then if they haven't already signed up for recurring service, now in this email, that's where you put in their weekly, biweekly, and monthly prices. Um, and then we would check in with them again at the three-month mark. And that is that completes our... Um, our onboarding strategy. And so our onboarding strategy, that was kind of the end of what we did. So before I go to the next part, let's just review this. Develop an exceptional new client onboarding strategy. Number one, do a field check at all first time or one time cleanings, except for move outs, but I would do them at a move in. Number two, leave behind promotional documents. Number three, leave a branded gift behind that will stick around, something they're not just gonna lose or throw in the trash. Number four, send a follow-up email the same day or the next day. And number five, check in at the three-month mark. Mm. Okay, so that used to be the end of it. But I was thinking, so the problem is this means that our clients are only hearing from us when we're calling them up saying, hey, I'm sorry, I have three sick employees today. Can we move your, um, can we move your appointment from Wednesday to Friday? Or, um, hey, just want to let you know we're increasing the cost of your service from $142 every two weeks to $155 every two weeks. This is not, these are not feel good touch points with our clients. And the only other time they would likely hear from us is if we disappointed them in some way and they were complaining about something to us. So these are not things that give people a good, warm feeling. So what we want to, and it's really important that people have good feelings associated with your brand. And that's why I decided to start a loyalty program. So 
There is a mountain of research that shows that loyalty programs are effective in retaining clients for longer amounts of time and also for increasing the amount of money that they spend with your company at like per month or per year. Uh, so they're going to stay with you longer and spend more money with you. And this is even more true with multi-tiered loyalty programs because people will want to try to move to the next tier. So when I started, I started ours last year and it was just one tier, but now we're moving it to two tiers. I mean, sorry, to three tiers. I'm going to show you our three-tiered system. And it might sound a little bit stupid, like why would anybody care about whether they are, you know, a VIP or not? Um, or why would they care about their loyalty program? But if you think about your own shopping behavior, if you look closely at it, it's like, I mean, it works on me. I would never not use my American Express card because my boyfriend would have a fit if we didn't have access to the American Express lounge when we're traveling. And I don't even have a dog, but I do have a favorite dog who is an angel named Patsy. And so just, it's my brother's dog. Despite the fact that I do not have, you know, she's not my dog, I still have a loyalty um, program at Mud Bay, which is like the puppy store where I give them my phone number every time and they send me little coupons. And then when I'm, you know, when she's staying with me and I'm getting her food and snacks and whatever, I give them my phone number and I don't even know what I'm getting, but I just, you know, participate in it because I'm sure I'm getting something from it. So, you know, it's also never been easier to hire a cleaning company. So I could probably hop online right now and book a new clean for my house for next week at half the cost that my company charges um, by handy or care. And they could probably get me in on like Tuesday or Wednesday. So that means now, are they going to be happy or as happy as they would be if they were clients at my company? No, they're, they're not, but they don't know that. So what the important part is, what the point is, is that we need to be working extra hard to make sure that our clients feel valued and special and appreciated. So the act of making them a VIP shows them that you care. And it's something that can be systematized. So when your company's small, it's really easy to make sure that all of your clients have warm, you know, fuzzy feelings with you. But as you grow, it's harder to maintain that, you know, those positive vibes with your clients because you're going to have hundreds of them. So it's just you need to have a way to have a system in place. And this allows you to do that. Um, so I'm going to skip a few things to keep this on track. So the reason why we're creating a VIP program, VIP programs increase both the length of time clients stay with the company and the amount of money they spend with the company per year. It is imperative to your business that your clients feel special, valued, and appreciated. And a VIP program is a way to systematize the production of that feeling which when I'm reading on the slide like that does indeed sound a little bit creepy, but you get the idea. You want to have a way that you're getting people feeling good. All right. So here's what our loyalty program looks like. So every regular recurring weekly, biweekly or monthly client is automatically enrolled in our VIP program at the six month mark. And so here's the tiers of our program. Silver is for monthly clients and they get 10% off all gift cards and 10% off of any seasonal deep cleanings that they might purchase with us. Gold is for biweekly clients and they get 15% off all gift cards and 15% off all deep cleans plus a free oven cleaning. And platinum is for weekly clients and they get 20% off all gift cards and 20% off all deep cleans plus a free oven cleaning and a free refrigerator cleaning. So um, are they even thinking that they're going to get a seasonal deep cleaning? Probably not. So what we're doing is planting the seed to give them more opportunities to spend more money with your company later. All of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, why am I not getting a seasonal deep cleaning? I didn't even know I should get a seasonal deep cleaning. Is, don't I have a cleaning company so that I don't need a seasonal deep cleaning? So you just kind of erase that idea out of their head right away. All right. It also, um, you're laying the idea of, oh, yeah, gift cards. And then, of course, hopefully you're priming them with emails about buying gift cards and stuff. Okay. Now, do we just um, throw an oven cleaning 
Oh, and um, a refrigerator cleaning on? No. What we do is include in the VIP packet that they get a coupon for a free oven cleaning and a coupon for a free refrigerator cleaning. And those coupons look like this. And most people don't even use these, but it's still nice to get them. Um, so here's what the VIP uh, program looks like. They get a really pretty sparkly gold envelope, hand addressed, and then um, inside of it, they get this letter, which is on black paper in gold foil. And we have a really fun brand, but this is like for our VIP clients for this, we have we give it more of a luxur luxurious feel. And so it says, congratulations, you've just become a Dazzle VIP client. As a VIP client, we're going to give you a free fridge cleaning, a free oven cleaning, 10% off of all seasonal deep cleanings. Okay, so this is actually our old one. This is when um, we only had one tier, but you get the idea. It's the same thing. Um, and 10% off all gift cards using the code I'm a VIP, plus the personal cell phone number of Dazzle's president. Our goal is to make you love is to make sure that you love your service with the Dazzle Cleaning Company. If there's anything that we can do to improve your experience with Dazzle, please reach out to us and let us know. And then we also include um, a specially made business card that matches this, that looks like this, and that has my personal cell phone number on it. All right, so personal cell phone number. If I were running a smaller business where people would ever consider using my cell phone number, would I give it out? No, definitely not. Because, I mean, like if you're at a place in your business where you're trying to get people away from using your cell phone, then don't give them your cell phone number. Um, but nobody would use my cell phone number. Everything goes through the office and it's been that way for years. So like they wouldn't even think to use my cell phone number. They don't have my cell phone number. So um, now when we implemented this and we made all of these people VIPs last year, since then two times I've had people use it. Both times they were really mad. Both times they were calling to just, you know, rent me a new one and cancel their service. And both times I was able to talk them off the cliff and hold on to them as clients. Now, the average client at my company spends more than $4,500 per year with us. Am I happy to have an interruption to my day with an angry client calling my personal cell phone number uh, so that I can keep them as a client? Yes, of course. I'm absolutely happy to do that. Um, okay, so we will, let me just kind of skip ahead a little bit here. Um, okay, so what's the right way to do this? Or what's the best way to do this? Well, I'll tell you the wrong way. The wrong way is to get an alert on your phone. Oh, Johnny becomes a VIP client today. Let me print out this paper and go find that coupon and go find an envelope and look for a stamp and fold them and put them in it. No pre-make 25 or 50 or 100 of them all at one time, all of them that you'll need for the year and have them in a little basket in your office. And then at the beginning of the week or any time during the week, address all of them to all of the people that are becoming VIPs that week and then drop them all in the mail at the same time, you know, make like streamline this whole process. Better still have somebody in your office do that for you so that you don't have to do it. All right, the last thing I'm going to say is that um, I'm going to give you a universal pro tip. And you can use this with all of your projects that you're doing. Instead of doing a little bit on Monday and an hour on Tuesday and thinking about it again next Monday, just block out a day. On Thursday, I'm going to start the VIP program. I'm going to start planning it. I'm going to design everything. I'm going to get the whole thing ready. And then do it all the way to completion on one day knock it off your list. Now, if there's things that you have to push out to get design work done or you're sending it to the printers or something, that's fine. Then you can separate it into two days. But the point is you can just like move through your to-do list a lot faster if you um, time block a big project and just get it all done at once. All right. So um, that's all. Thank you so much to Amar and Courtney and everybody at ZenMade for putting this together. Um, I'm so excited to see more of the presentations. And visit my website, www.cleaningbusinessmarketing.biz, um, if you want to have ideas about ways to market your business, or if you want to learn how to set up and run your own Google or Facebook ads or email campaigns. I mean, I just have tons of free resources on my business. I mean, I'm sorry, on how to market your business um, on my website. And you can also 
um, book a free expert coaching uh, call with me for half an hour and I'll answer any questions you have. And even if you're not in a position to um, spend money on having someone else do your Google ads or your Facebook ads, like you're a brand new business or whatever, you can still book that call with me or just message me. And I'm really, really happy to talk you through any problems you might have or help you troubleshoot or answer your questions or, you know, whatever. I'm just super happy to help you guys. All right. That's all. Thank you so much. Have a great day.